video we'll talk about the confocal microscopy this is also under the section called methods in biology we are talking about microscopy and targeting csir net examination so in this video we'll learn about the principles of confocal microscopy working principles application of confocal microscopy and limitations of the confocal microscopy let's quickly talk about the analytics this topic is under unit 13 in CSIR net. The questions are asked in part B and part C. Difficulty level is easy to moderate and they are highly scoring and question types are generally application based or based on principles or components that are used in this microscopy technique. Let's talk about the resources that you can refer to. You can always refer to these Pathfinder books which are great for revision work. Especially you would find these particular microscopy resources in the biophysics and molecular biology book. So in this book, you can find these uh, topics in the biophysics section, chapter 6, page number 89 in the latest edition. You might have a different edition, so the page numbers might differ. But anyway, these books are highly precise, written according to CSIR net syllabus and for CSIR net syllabus. So they are useful. Amazon link would be provided in the description. Okay, let's talk about the principles of confocal microscopy. Confocal microscopy is nothing but one variant of fluorescence microscopy. So it works on the basis of fluorescence. So let us quickly revise the concepts behind fluorescence. Here, we excite one fluorophore with the help of a particular uh, excitation wavelength in this case blue, which allows the excitation of fluorescent molecule into a higher excitation state. Eventually it will relax and vibrational relaxation would ultimately give rise to emission of energy in terms of fluorescence light. And the emitted fluorescent light would have a higher wavelength compared to the excitation light. Now let us try to understand the working principle principle in bit more details. Now confocal microscopy can overcome many problems associated with epifluorescence microscopy. Let me tell you what are the problems in epifluorescence microscopy. In order to demonstrate that, let us look at these two pictures. Whatever you are seeing, these are the Drosophila NM neuromuscular junction. Anyway, in the right hand picture, what do you see? You can pause the video and tell me. Okay, look at the next image. These are the same cells, same field. One is imaged in confocal microscopy. Another is imaged with a normal epifluorescence microscope. What changes do you see? Okay, anyone can tell us that the right hand side image looks more blurry and out of focus. Whereas the left hand side confocal image looks more crisp and sharp and the details are more. So obviously we can appreciate the differences in terms of resolution and uh, the quality of the images. But why does fluorescence microscopy gives this kind of blur and confocal can overcome that? We need to understand that in a bit more details. So in order to understand that, let us try to understand wide field illumination versus a laser illumination. So this is the plane of focus that means where we are trying to focus our light and in wide field illumination which looks somewhat like this, excites some fluorophores present in the plane of focus, but also it excites a lot of fluorophores which are not in the plane of focus. This results in blurry image because all of the light coming from all different planes are flooding the detector at once. Now in, in case of confocal microscopy where we use lasers, the laser can be focused into a narrower volume. So the laser can be focused in a tight waist. That means the probability that fluorescence molecule present in other planes would be illuminated is extremely low, but there are some amount of probability as well. That is why confocal illumination with laser gives us better resolution and less out of focus lights. So already we can understand the image quality would improve. The second tactics that is used in confocal microscopy is highlighted in red. You can see overall the optics and other arrangement look similar. First of all, it is using the laser as an illumination source. And second of all, just before the detector, it is using a pinhole. 
Pinhole cancels out excess of light coming from other planes or out of focus lights and that improves the resolution and image quality. So let's look at the ray diagram of fluorescence microscope and confocal microscope. So here we can see in the fluorescence microscope the fluorescent light coming from the plane in focus is now focused in the camera. So obviously we will get an image. But some light coming from other plane is now also flooding the camera leading to a blurry image. But in confocal microscopy obviously the specimen plane is confocal or in the same focal plane with the pinhole and it only allows the focus light to pass and the light that is coming from other planes which are not focused would be cancelled out using this pinhole as shown here. So obviously out of focus lights are blocked whereas out of focus lights are flooding the detector in fluorescence microscope and this makes the big difference in terms of image quality and resolution. So what we learned overall is the pinhole is the heart of the confocal micros microscopy and pinhole cancels excess light. We can also control the pinhole diameter. By changing the pinhole diameter, we would see differences in image quality. Look at the one airy unit pinhole diameter. The image looked pretty sharp, nice and focused. If we open the pinhole to two airy unit, lot of out of focus light can get in. Now this image looks somewhat more blurry, just like a fluorescence image. And now if we restrict the pinhole to 0.5 airy unit, we can see the resolution has improved. The image becomes sharper, but we are losing low lights. Like you can see in images, the uh, in this particular image, the dim part is not anymore visible. That means we has we have lost a lot of light. So wherever there is a low signal, we have lost that. Anyway, now let's talk about um, the point scanning method. So confocal use a point scanning method. So it can steer the laser in different points along the specimen plane and then can make the image point by point and scan it line by line. This is known as raster scan. This could be understood by this diagram. See how the laser can steer in different points and making the image shown here point by point. Another feature of confocal is known as optical sectioning. That means it takes image from one plane at a time and then combine all the plane to give us a composite 3D image. We can understand this better with this particular example. On the right hand side, you can see a 3D projection of a fly brain. And in the left hand side, you are seeing we are browsing from the lower part of the Z stack to the higher part of the Z stack. That means all individual images. None of the individual images might be useful, but as a whole, the overall structure is highlighted in the 3D projection. And that's the biggest advantage of using a confocal microscope. Now, confocal images can be interpreted in different ways. Let me tell you all the colors that you see here in the confocal microscope, all are pseudo colors. All are assigned by the user. These are not natural colors, okay? So, an ideal confocal image should look like this. Here, whatever you see in gray means different gray values. Look at the scale bar on the right hand side. It suggests the values can grow from, go from 0 to 255 because it's an 8 bit depth image. If it's a higher bit depth image like 16 bit, then it would be having pixel values from 0 to 4 to the plus 6. Anyway, in this image, you can see there are different, different gradations of gray. More the gradations of gray, better the image it is. If you cannot appreciate from this particular image, let us apply a false color. Now in this false color, you can see there are pixel values which are correspond to high values, very close to 255. And also there are pixel values which are very close to zero. So the whole dynamic range of the detector is utilized for this image and that is why it's a good image. Let us try to understand which is a good, which is a bad image using a simple uh, thumb rule. So greater the dynamic range, better would be the image. Like your ideal image should utilize the whole dynamic range and it should have different kinds of gray values. These are two golden rules. Now these are the 
images of same specimen taken at different PMT settings and different exposures. Now you can see the first image is too much saturated. All the pixels here in the neurons look pretty much like 255 around. That means it is kind of oversaturated, overexposed image. The second image has utilized the dynamic range properly. Whereas in the last image, we can see the signal is very less. That means it is underexposed. It's also not good. So moral of the story, too much is not good, too less is not good. We need to hit that sweet spot. Okay, let us talk about the detectors of confocal system. One of the de popular detectors that are used in confocal system is photomultiplier tube. The name suggests photomultiplier. That means it is mul there is a multiplication factor. We can understand this. In photomultiplier tube, you use the photoelectric effect. So here is the photon. That means let's say the emitted light, which is hitting this photocathode. This leads to ejection of specific electron from this photocathode. That hits this dynode array and leads to production of secondary electrons. And this secondary electrons amplifies as it bounces back and forth through this dynode array. And that gives rise to that photomultiplication function. That means more it bounces through this dynode array, the signal is getting amplified. And this is how it is possible to detect even faint signal using laser scanning confocal microscope systems. Now there are several parameters used in the confocal microscopy such as PMT voltage, offset, all of these. For an ideal image, all these parameters has to be adjusted. Let me give you a quick example. Here is an ideal image where all the parameters are set nicely. And this is false color just for your better understanding. Now look at another image. Here instantly you can see a lot of bright pixels in the background. So ideally the background should have a value close to zero. But in the second image the offset was not set properly. And that is why you are getting a high background or too much noise. So these kind of settings are really important while we are imaging in confocal microscopy. Now these days people use hybrid detectors for uh, which are more sensitive and can detect even minute amount of signal in the specimen. Generally people use multi-alkali detectors in confocal microscopes. Another feature of confocal microscopy is the digital zoom. In addition to the magnification that the lens provide, one can focus into a small region of interest and highlight that like this. So obviously it improves the image quality and resolution. So overall, we learned that why confocal is better than the epifluorescence microscopy. What are optical sectioning and Z stacking? We looked at adjusting gain and offset in PMT is important for better image quality. We looked at scanning modes used in confocal detectors that are used in confocal. We talked about photomultiplier tube. We also looked at factors that determine image quality. But let me tell you that confocal microscopy also has disadvantages. First of all, this is very costly. Second of all, even with confocal, we cannot image a fluorophore which is present in the deep uh, plane. That means anything which is deeper than 100 micrometer or 200 micrometer cannot be imaged nicely with a confocal microscope. So with depth, the image quality becomes really poor due to scattering. And these problems are taken care of in two photon microscopy. So the next lecture would be about two photon microscopy. But for now, let's practice some questions uh, from previous year's CSIR paper. So this is the question from NET 2018, December NET. This question is from part B, which suggests which of the following is used as an excitation source for confocal microscope. So very simple uh, question from the principles of confocal microscopy. So obviously you can understand it confocal uses coherent sources like lasers. Okay, let us practice some questions which would be uh, CSIR type like uh, this particular question, what factors improve the image quality in confocal microscope in comparison with fluorescence microscopy? A, using a pinhole, B, using lasers as illumination source, C, using fluorescence light, and D, both A and B. So the correct option here would be D because using both pinhole and lasers would improve our image quality as we have seen in this lecture. Question number two says, 
the out of focus light in confocal microscopy is cancelled out by using a pinhole using phase rings using neutral density filter and using bandpass filter correct answer would be using a pinhole we see how we can change the pinhole diameter and how it changes the image quality in this lecture we have seen that right question number three which of the following is uh, following is regarding um, which of the following regarding confocal microscopy is true this microscopy technique utilize a pinhole to cancel out out of focus lights it is you it use laser based illumination system the specimen plane is confocal with the pinhole and all of the above so obviously the correct answer would be all of the above anyway if you want more mcq questions regarding microscopy section or unit 13 you can find them in the description so all the links would be provided in the description in case i upload any future video it would be linked in the description you can go get many notes and flashcards regarding many biology and csir related topics in my facebook page you can download these flashcards from there you can also log into my instagram page and follow me there you can download flashcards from instagram page as well all the links are in description you can support this channel by using a super thanks option which is present in the bottom right corner of the video you can contribute using paytm paypal or upi anyway if you wish to connect you can follow me on social media all links are provided in the description you can follow narad medic channel for exclusive medical content as well see you in the next video if you have any suggestion feel free to put it and please share these videos with your friends because making one of these videos takes a lot of time lot of effort and you know the quality is good so please share it with your friends and help them